the third lecture on logar polynomial in the early earlier two classes we have introduced logar differential equation logar polynomial and discussed about its series expression for logar polynomial we have discussed the d r vortex formula generating function and use the generating function for the determination of logar polynomial and also establish the recurrence relation and use those to find logar polynomial today i we shall discuss the orthogonality property of logar polynomial orthogonality of logar polynomial in the earlier situation we have found that legendary polynomial pn of x pm of x integrated over dx is a orthogonal in the sense it leads you to a delta function <coughs> in the case of harmonic differential harmonic polynomial hn of x h m of x it will be our x square dx again leads to an orthogonal relation mm. here we say that the legendre polynomial forms an orthogonal basis in the integral minus 1 to plus 1 and the harmonic polynomial of two forms an orthogonal basis orthogonal function in the range g minus infinity plus infinity with respect to weight factor minus x square this will be our minus x square now we want to find a similar expression for logar differential logar polynomial and it comes out to be the logar differential equation <coughs> hn of x ln of x lm of x has orthogonal relation uh, mm, orthogonal relation in the interval 0 to infinity with respect to weight factor e to the power x so this is a part we mean the by the orthogonal our aim is to find out this and we call this integral as i n m uh, to establish this, we first try the logar the differential equation for logar polynomial of two different orders n and m. The ln satisfies this equation x ln double prime plus one minus x ln. I am omitting the arguments and for nth order law logar polynomial satisfies this equation we multiply first one with lm and second one by L, ln and subtract the second from the first so we get x common ln double prime lm when this is multiplied by m, this is the term, and when this is multiplied by ln, this is ln l m double prime. Coming to this term, 1 minus x is taken common, ln prime, ln minus ln, ln prime. And for the other two terms, we have n minus m, ln, ln. Is equal to zero. We can write it as if we take this is a function capital Y, then if we find out dy dx, then you get this term because y is equal to ln prime lm minus ln lm prime dy dx is equal to ln double prime lm minus l n prime ln prime then this sorry this is plus then ln prime lm prime minus ln lm double prime so these two down cancels each other so we get a left with this which is nothing but this stuff so we write x 
dy dx plus 1 minus x y and we are taking the other things to the other side where y is given by this this all, dividing all through by x we can write it as dy dx plus p of x times y is equal to q of x where p of x is equal to 1 minus x by x is equal to 1 upon x minus 1 and q of x always depends on nm this is minus n minus n by x and lm. This differential equation has an integrated integrating factor. Integrating factor. Factor, which is e to the power p dx. So if we integrate p, we get log x minus x e to the power log x minus x. So this x e to the power minus x. This is the integrating factor. If we also we multiply both the sides of this equation by integrating factor. Multiplying by integrating factor, we get x e to the power minus x dy dx plus p. p means 1 minus x by x, this is p. And on the right hand side q means minus n minus m by x times x e to the power minus x ln ln. This part cancels out or we get write this as dx of x e to the power minus x times y because if when we consider keep this part fixed and integrate this we get this term and if we keeping this term fixed if we integrate the, like differentiate this first term is 1 and second term is minus x the last expression <coughs> with respect to x between limits 0 to infinity because it is the range of interest for lower differential equation so we integrate it so from integrating we will get x e to the power minus x times y from 0 to infinity on the other side we have n minus n integration 0 to infinity e to the power minus x ln of x ln of x dx this part at x is equal to 0 it is this x it is 0 for x part and at infinity it is 0 to due to the e to the power minus x part so it is equal to 0 if m not equal to m this part is not 0 but the product is 0 so we conclusively get that e to the power minus x n l m 
dx is 0. This is the orthogonality. Refers to the coming to normality condition. If n is equal to m, if m is equal to m, we get to, we do not get any con conclusion. We do not get any conclusion. Conclusion from this calculation. From this calculation. This is called the normality condition. So for normality, we shall be used <coughs> as a generating function. So our task remains to find out the normalization constant mm, or normality condition for log r polynomial. That is to say, <coughs> we are to calculate i n n or n is to calculate i n n 0 to infinity e to the power minus x n n. This is to find out. We use generating function. <coughs> so, first n is equal to 0 to infinity t to the power n ln of x, then sum over m from 0 to infinity t to the power m ln of x is equal to 1 minus e to the power square e to the e to the power minus 2xt 1 minus t because for this we have to use gxt and parameter for gxt and this is thus we multiply both the side by e to the power minus x and we write it as t to the power n plus m sum runs from over n m and we write e to the power minus x ln, ln of x ln of x and on the right hand side we have 1 minus t square common uh, are taken out and we have e to the power minus 2x t 1 minus t minus x so which here comes out to be So this is 1 plus t 1 minus t times x. So this becomes <coughs> e to the power minus x 1 plus t 1 minus t. If we integrate this with respect to x between limits 0 to uh, infinity. So we get summation over n m t to the power n plus m <coughs> 0 to infinity e to the power minus x ln ln of x dx on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have 1 minus sorry we 1 minus t square and integration of e to the power <coughs> x1 plus t1 minus t dx from 0 to infinity. So this part is then minus 1 minus t1 plus t and e to the power minus x. 1 plus t, 1 minus t, limit 0 to infinity. In the limit to infinity, it is 0, and so our lower limit contributes, so we can write 1, one minus t whole square times 
1 minus t 1 plus t that is 1 minus t squared so 1 minus t squared to the power minus 1 now coming to this side we know that this is delta m delta m n so this contributes only when m is equal to n so we write it as single sum n is equal to n is equal to 0 to infinity e to the power 2n integration e to the power minus x ln square of x dx from 0 to infinity as as 1 minus 1 minus t square to the power minus 1 which is equal to k is equal to pains are not working well uh, k is equal to k is equal to 0 to infinity t to the power 2k if we compare the coefficient of a given order of t we find that <coughs> if we compare the t to the power the coefficient of t to the power 2n on the left and right we get that 0 to infinity e to the power minus x ln x dx is equal to 1 so we write the orthogonality condition of logarithmic differential orthonormal this is the normality condition normality condition so we all write the orthonormality condition It is very easy to verify this relation for the lower order logar polynomial. <coughs> As for example, um, we, we calculate few results for few lower order polynomials. We will first consider the normality of L0. So we consider I0 zero zero, it is e to the power minus 6 L0 square x dx from 0 to infinity. Now L0 is 1, so e to the power minus 6 dx. This is gamma 1. Now coming to 1 0 e to the power minus x. This is L1 x l0 of x dx so it is e to the power minus x l1 is 1 minus x and l0 is 1 so first term is gamma 1 second term is gamma 2 this is it now coming to uh, 1 1 e to the power minus x l1 square of x dx so this is 0 to infinity 1 minus x whole square e to the power minus x dx this is 0 to infinity e to the power minus x 1 minus 2x plus x square dx first one is gamma 1 Second one is minus 2, gamma 2, and then gamma 3. This is 1, this is minus 2, and gamma 3 is 2. So the normality condition is established. Now, lastly, to conclude logar differential equation, logar polynomial, we just <coughs> Say the Fourier logar expansion. Any function in the range zero to infinity uh, in the range Fourier
any function x which is defined in the range x for x uh, 0 and satisfies Dirichlet's condition. Dirichlet's condition can be expanded in terms of log r polynomial as log r polynomial forms a complete basis in this range. To find out the expansion coefficient, we multiply both the sides by <coughs> multiply both the side to the power x ln of x. So we get on the right, left hand side 0 to infinity f of x e to the power minus x lm of x dx and on the right hand side we have summation over n a n within integration e to the power x ln of x lm of x dx from 0 to infinity. This is delta lm so this is AM. So we get AM as this. So a in Fourier global expansion AM is given by f of x e to the power minus x ln of x dx. The, this expansion is possible as global polynomial forms a complete basis uh, or in the range 0 to infinity. As we have already seen that <coughs> Legender and Hermite form Legender forms a complete basis in the range uh, 0 to um, uh, minus 1 to plus 1 and while Hermite forms a complete basis in the range minus infinity to plus infinity. By this we end our discussion on Lagar poly differential equation and Lagar polynomial from next class on what we shall take take a Bessel differential equation which is a more very important differential equation in mathematical physics.